So our scripture today is short. It is Romans chapter 12, the first two verses. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When I was growing up in Springfield, Illinois, my hometown, uh, I was blessed to be part of a church community. Now that seems like a pretty obvious statement to those of us sitting here. Most of us here at Salem can take for granted that we are members of a church community, at least one. Um, we have a building, history, a pastor. We have a mission in the community. And of course, we have each other. But being blessed with the church community as a child is not really something to take for granted, and yet most of us as kids did. And it's especially not something to take for granted in today's day and age. So as a kid, my main question was, why am I here? This is what I asked. Even as far back as when I was Miley's age, I asked the question, why were there stained glass windows in my church? Never got a good answer. Why did the preacher stand behind a big piece of wood? Never understood that one. Why did people sing old songs? Still don't understand. No, I do now. But as a kid, uh, I didn't understand. Why do people stand up at certain times and not at others? Who thought of that? Why do people close their eyes when they pray? And to go back to the children's message, why my, my church was four stories high, so I had kind of like a cathedral growing up. And way up high were these ornate antique light fixtures. And boy, if every Sunday I think I looked up there and said, how do they change those light bulbs? No idea. When I became a young adult, I started realizing that those questions were a call to, a kind of a call to ministry. I, I was one of those that asked those questions. And, but my biggest one was, why am I here? And it's probably a question that we all as kids asked. It's even a question a lot of adults ask. And that's why our tradition has the call to worship. It was designed in our worship service every week to remind us of why we, the church, exist. This call is like the bell out that is rung at the beginning to announce that worship is beginning. It's a definitive transition from one time to another time. The call to worship is the official beginning of our worship, the opening of a different kind of time, what we call sacred time. The past is now done. Now, we are worshiping God together. Now each one of us can go home on our own and worship God in a way that we find comfortable alone. The call to worship brings us officially together. And it is a choice that we have made. It serves as a reminder in the service to answer the question, why am I here? Almost
almost always, you will notice, as in today, that the call to worship begins with praise. Praise. What is praise? That was another question I had as a kid. I just didn't quite know what praise meant. Praise to God. Praise to the one who is always higher than us always bigger than us, always more powerful than us, greater than us. And opening our worship with praise, we offer ourselves, we acknowledge by the simple act that we, as Christians, are in fact less than God. Yet, we are created and blessed and redeemed be in relationship with God. This call to worship is an expression of gratitude. We acknowledge and praise God for the gifts of every part of life. And to acknowledge that we are all, well, humans in relationship with God. And by doing this call together as a body of Christ, we're acknowledging that we need each other to fully worship God. It took me many years to understand this, and I kept asking why, even though the answer was simple. And those are the biggest questions, are the ones that have simple answers that you don't understand until years later. The call of worship is meant to answer the question, why am I here? But it's meant to answer the, also the question, why are we here? Paul told the church in Rome, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now the 12th chapter of Romans opens with these words and then goes on to explain how we as a church are meant to offer humble service to the body of Christ, as well as put our love into action. That Paul talks about this and begins with an acknowledgement, though, of our need for worship. Church is not possible until we offer ourselves to God. Our faith is not possible until we offer ourselves to God, until we say, we acknowledge you. Till we say, we worship you. Till we bow down before God to offer ourselves to God and each other. God is bigger, and we're meant to be a humble and grateful people, and not alone, but together. As a child, I had no concept of the we in worship. I mean, even my youngest just asked, there's a lot of people in church. That's a question. You know, I think as a kid, we ask those, like, what are all these people doing together? And I didn't understand as a child the importance of my church community. And I think we're all kind of still learning, right, about the importance of who we are together. But like any good prayer, the call to worship, which happens every week, just as a gentle reminder. You know how you say things to your kids over and over and then a few years later they finally catch on to what that lesson that you were trying to impart but you did so gently. You did so repetitively. You did so with grace. And it's a basic message. We are called to be together. We are called to worship together. The call to worship would not be the same without the we. It took me years of adulthood to understand this. Because, and this is just a little aside about being a Protestant, um, and even a Protestant minister, I was taught that worship had something primarily to do with getting right between me and God. That's what worship was. 
And the call to worship speaks of a different value. It designates this time, this time right now, as sacred time, something different. Like opening a book each week that is sacred. At that, at, as time that we have chosen to set aside for discerning God's face together. So I'm just going to share one last secret ingredient of the call to worship. It is not a Christian act originally. We inherited it from our Jewish brothers and sisters. We inherited this piece of our worship straight from that tradition of Jesus that Jesus practiced. Because on the seventh day, the Sabbath, was designated sacred time. As such, Jews marked the opening of that time with a special call to worship. And the same with our tradition. As we assemble as a people on Sunday morning and begin with this call. In the same way, observant Jews begin the Shabbat. That's Friday night, typically. With a special prayer. And the intention is exactly the same, to mark sacred time, acknowledge God's power, and enter into worship as a community. I feel good sharing this with you because I wish somebody back when I was growing up had shared it with me. And maybe you already knew this. But it makes this very ancient act that we do each week. So why am I here? Why are we here? Why are we marking sacred time together? I think that would require a sermon from each of you. Why are we here? And I think our kids could give a sermon on why they are here. And I think it would be very interesting to hear from each of you why you are here. And it would be unique. But at the same time, I think we would find some common ground among all of us if we each shared our story of why we're here. We would find a common ground, an inner need to accept our humanity, the relationship with God, and acknowledge that we're stronger together, that we're able to see more of God together, and that together we can grow in ways that would never be possible without each of us, without the church. Amen.